Big Rock, Little Rock, a story from Mali, given to me by Ben Haggerty, who received it from Sutigi Kuyati. Once, when rocks could still go hunting, and human beings could understand the language of all of nature, Big Rock and Little Rock went hunting in the forest. Big Rock took his big bow and arrow. Little Rock took his little bow and arrow. And off they went into the forest. They hunted all day. Big Rock was not as successful as Little Rock. Even with his big bow and arrow, he only caught five birds. But little Rock, with his little bow and arrow, he caught 10 birds. Big Rock was not pleased. They'd hunted so long all day in the forest that night began to fall. So they decided to build a fire and to sit, sleep in the forest that night and make their way home in the morning. So as they sat around the fire telling each other stories, Big Rock had an idea. He said, Little Rock, why don't we divide the birds like this? Why don't we eat your 10 birds for dinner and then in the morning we'll have my five birds for breakfast? What do you say? It's a great idea, said Little Rock. So Big Rock and Little Rock, they plucked the birds, they roasted the birds, they ate the birds. The birds were delicious. Then they both went to sleep. The next morning, the birds were singing in the trees. The sun had risen. Little Rock rolled over and made a fire. And then very gently, he rolled towards his friend, Big Rock, and he whispered, Big Rock, Big Rock, it's time to wake up. If you give me your five birds, I'll make our breakfast. Leave me alone, said Big Rock. Sorry, said Little Rock, I didn't mean to disturb you. Just, just give me your birds and I'll make breakfast. You're not getting my birds, said Big Rock. What do you mean, said Little Rock? I I'm going to make breakfast. You're not getting my birds, said Big Rock. I'm taking my birds home to my grandmother. But you promised, said Little Rock. You said we would eat my 10 birds for dinner and your five birds for breakfast. Change my mind, said Big Rock. You're not getting my birds. Little Rock was surprised by his friend's behavior and he rolled closer towards him just to appeal to him. But Big Rock, suspecting violence, he rolled away. What Big Rock didn't know was that behind him was sleeping a huge green frog. When that huge green frog saw this rock rolling towards him, he leapt out of the way. What the frog didn't know was that walking through the forest at that moment, there was a woman. The woman had a basket on her head filled with firewood. Now, this woman did not like frogs, and when she saw this huge green frog jumping towards her, she screamed, she leapt out of the way, the basket fell from her head, and all the firewood fell to the ground. Now, what she didn't know was that there was a hunter in that forest at that very moment with his hunting dog who had his bow and arrow trained on a deer. Now, you know how dogs feel about sticks. When the dog saw those sticks, he leapt. One of them had rolled towards his master's foot, and he couldn't resist it. He bit down but unfortunately not on the stick. He bit down on his master's foot. His master yelped with pain, he misfired, the arrow flew from his bow, and instead of striking the deer, it struck a bird that was flying through the forest at that very moment. The bird was impaled against the trunk of a tree. The bird began to bleed, first little drips, then a trickle, then a stream, and then a whoosh! of blood, a river of blood, which ran through the forest, out of the forest, over hills, down hills, through the gardens of the King of Mali. The King of Mali was playing with his children, and to his surprise, whoosh, they were washed away by that river of blood. The King of Mali was furious. He said to his servant, who has dared to bleed a river of blood and wash my children away? I don't know, said the servant. Then we will investigate, said the King of Mali. Come with me. And the king and his servant they made their way following that river of blood. They walked up hills, down hills, through villages, until finally they left those villages and found themselves on the path into the forest. They entered the forest following that river of blood until they came to the tree, and there they saw the bird impaled against the trunk of the tree. Oh dear, said the bird, oh dear, oh dear. You bird, said the king of Mali, how dare you? How dare you bleed a river of blood and wash my children away? I didn't mean to do it, said the bird. I was impaled against the trunk of this tree by a hunter. Which hunter? That hunter, said the bird. 
So the King of Mali walked towards the hunter, who was nursing his wounded foot. You hunter, said the King of Mali, how dare you shoot that bird, impale it against the trunk of a tree, causing it to bleed a river of blood and wash my children away. I didn't mean to, said the hunter. My dog bit me. I don't know why he bit me. You dog, said the King of Mali, how dare you bite your master? causing him to shoot that bird, impel him against the trunk of a tree, causing it to bleed a river of blood and wash my children away. I didn't mean to, said the dog. It was just the sticks. It was the sticks. You know how I feel about sticks. I'm a dog. I can't help myself. I didn't mean to bite my, my master. Sticks? What sticks? The sticks that woman threw. What woman? That woman, said the dog. So the king of Mali walked towards the woman who was just putting the last stick in her basket. You, woman, said the king of Mali. How dare you? How dare you throw sticks, causing the dog to jump and by accident bite his hunter, who misfired, impaling the bird against the trunk of a tree, causing it to bleed a river of blood and wash my children away. I didn't mean to throw sticks, said the woman. I was walking through the forest, minding my own business, when a huge frog came leaping towards me. Which frog? That frog, she said. I don't like frogs. The king of Mali walked towards the frog. He said, frog, how dare you? How dare you leap towards the woman, causing her to drop the sticks, causing the dog to be confused and by accident bite his master, causing that hunter to impale that bird against the trunk of a tree, causing it to bleed a river of blood and wash my children away. I, I didn't mean to, said the frog. I was sleeping and then a huge rock began to roll towards me. Which rock? That rock. The king of Mali saw two rocks arguing backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, one big, one small. Which rock? The big one, said the frog. You. Rock, said the King of Mali. How dare you? How dare you roll towards the frog, causing the frog to leap, causing the frog to surprise the woman who dropped her basket, dropping the sticks, causing the dog to become excited and confused and by accident bite his hunter, causing the hunter to impale that bird against the trunk of a tree, causing it to bleed a river of blood and wash my children away. It wasn't my fault, said Big Rock. Little Rock was going to attack me. I wasn't, said Little Rock. This is what happened, Your Majesty. Little Rock told the King of Mali everything. From the beginning to this moment, the king of Mali was furious. He turned to Big Rock and he said, Big Rock, Big Rock, all of these events today are caused by one thing and one thing only, your greed. And for that, you will pay. And he sent his servant back to the palace. He told the servant to come back with the stone cutter. The stone cutter came with his hammer and his chisel. The king of Mali said, split this rock in half. Split this rock in half so he will understand that because of his greed, my children were washed away in a river of blood. Poor big rock. The stone cutter rested his chisel against his back. He held his hammer firm in his hand. He lifted it high in the air and he was just about to strike when the king of Mali heard, Father! Father! And when he looked in the direction from which the voices came, who did he see? Smeared in blood, but his two children, who were being held, each by their hand, by another servant from the palace. When the king of Mali saw that his children were safe, and after he had examined them and made sure there were no marks, no bruises, no cuts, no wounds, he turned towards Big Rock, and he said, Big Rock, you are lucky. You are lucky that my children are alive and well, but you must learn from this. You must learn that because of your greed, we are all here now. And he told the stone cutter not to split Big Rock in half, but to carve the story upon his back. He told him to carve the story of Big Rock, Little Rock, the frog, the woman with the sticks, the dog, the hunter, the arrow impaled against the bird that was against the trunk of the tree. He asked him to carve into the back of Big Rock the story of the river of blood that had washed his children away. When Ben told me this story, he said that in Mali, in one of the ruins of one of the castles, in that great, great kingdom, there is an archway. And above that archway, there is a rock. And upon its back is carved the story of Big Rock and Little Rock. And that is the end of that story.